you clicked on this video and you're wondering, can you really MIG weld aluminum with any MIG welder? I'm here to tell you you can, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to convert your MIG welder today to be able to weld aluminum, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. Stick around. So in full disclosure, guys, there is actually one catch, and you noticed that I said the word MIG welder not self-shielded, not flux core. It's gotta be a MIG welder. And when I say that, it's gotta have a provision to be able to hook gas to it. Because in order to weld aluminum, you gotta have argon. So you're gonna need argon gas to be able to do this. And I'll show you what else you're gonna need. So for our experiment, guys, we're gonna be using a Hobart Handler 140. And again, the reason for this is because it does accept gas. But most importantly, this is a 120 volt welder, guys. So this is probably going to be right at the maximum that you're going to be able to weld aluminum with simply because it takes a lot of amperage to weld aluminum but we're going to do it with this machine today and i'm going to show you everything that you need to do to convert your welder over to be able to weld aluminum now as you can see guys this is just a regular old mig welder that's designed to run either self-shielded flux coil wire or solid wire with c25 gas but again like i said we are going to convert this over so that we can run aluminum MIG wire in this machine. So one of the first things we've got to do guys is we've got to take off the whip or the MIG gun because we've got to replace the liner, take the original steel liner out and replace it with a Teflon or graphene liner. And there's just a couple wires up in here for the trigger. We'll get those out of there and we can take this whole assembly out. So now our MIG gun is completely disassembled. So this is the piece that goes into the machine right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna inspect everything while we got it apart, check our O-rings, make sure that there's no cracks because that's what's gonna be the seal to prevent the gas from leaking out. Then we're gonna inspect all our parts at the torque side and you can see this right here uh, is pretty destroyed. Uh, I've run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of wire through this machine so while we're here we're going to just do a little bit of maintenance. I've got a replacement piece for that so we can get that replaced out so while we're here we're going to put in a new liner we'll replace that piece. And this is what we're going to be replacing our liner with guys. We're going to be taking out our metal steel liner which is used for solid wire and flux core and we're going to be replacing it with an HDPE or Teflon or graphene. Those are all different names that these can be called. We're gonna re be replacing that steel liner with this. And I will put links down in the description for everything. I think this liner was like 15 bucks. Now you gotta remember guys, this welder was not ever manufactured, marketed, or sold to weld aluminum. I'm showing you how you can do this, how all welders work. All welders work off this same principle. You're not gonna have a lot of the specific features on this because basically you're just going to have amperage and voltage and wire feed speed that's all you're going to have you're not going to have burn back time or inductance or any of the other settings but you can weld aluminum with these and i'm going to show you just how you can do it so pull off our contact tip get that out of there look how beat that beat up that is guys you can see there's a liner pretty rough shape so now we'll pull apart the other side. So now we just loosen up this side. Now the steps that you're gonna do here, guys, aren't anything special or particular just because we're running aluminum wire. These steps are gonna be whatever your MIG manufacturer says on how to replace the liner. Just follow those steps, that's what we're doing here. We're just putting in, instead of a metal liner, we're putting in a graphene liner. But the steps, again, they're all the same. Just follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to replace a liner. So what you wanna do now is lay your whip out as straight as you can get it. Your best bet, guys, is to just straighten this whip out straight on the floor and just pull your old liner out. Just like that. So now that you've got your old liner out, just line it up to the new liner to make sure that everything matches up so that the thread's the same, so that it's got the O-ring the same, so that it all looks the same. Now I know this looks right. Now I'll take this out of the package and we'll check it for length. Now the reason that your original liner that comes on the gun will not work with aluminum wire in your machine is that 
it's just too abrasive inside. It's got this metal core inside this liner and it's just too abrasive to be running your aluminum against. So you want a liner that is slippery and smooth which is this Teflon or graphene or PTFE uh, liner or HDPE whatever they call it. It's just a smooth liner made to run aluminum down through it and the aluminum will feed extremely smooth down the inside of this liner and that's what you want. We'll be talking about what specific wire we need shortly in this video. So now I'm going to take my two liners and just match them up. Make sure that the length is right and that it's long enough. It's probably the new one's probably going to be too long but that's okay. Oh it is, look. That's where the new one runs out. We got plenty of slack. Tons of slack, so that's good. I'd rather have too much than not enough. All right, so now we're gonna take our line right here and just stretch it out and feed it into the end of our MIG gun, just like this. Push it down through until it comes out the other end. Okay. It's all the way up at the other end. It feels like it's caught inside the gun though. We have to move this around a little. And there it is. So now I'll just pull it. Typically having this stretched out on the floor guys would be a lot easier but I'm kind of doing this as a demonstration so you can see me putting this all together and how this stuff is all going to come together. There we go. Now you can see we're right to here. I'm just going to snug this up now. Now just snug this up a little bit. There we go. We know that our O-rings look good so now we can just put this back as we found it. And we can hook our cable back up or our trigger. So now looking into the cabinet we got a little bit of work to do. You can see how the edge of our liner is touching the drive roller. Well we don't want that. We want it close but we don't want it touching. So we're gonna have to trim this liner a little bit. Real easy to do. Just get yourself a nice sharp blade. For here I'm using an X-Acto knife but uh, and just trim it real close. Do a little bit at a time so you can get it fairly close without hitting but you can see now it's so close that when we drop this wheel down it actually hits that wheel right there not allowing it to make contact. So you just got to trim this just a little bit. There. That's super close but not touching. Watch this guys. I can just barely fit that blade through there. See that? Here we have our new graphene liner here and we've got our old metal liner here and obviously we're hooked into the machine over there. So you can see this right here. You see I pull this in and out now. I'm going to grip this tight with my fingers. Watch. So actually let me push it in. Now I can pull it out. Look, I can pull this in and out about an inch and a half but it's not moving on this end when I do that. So you watch. So what we're going to do is we're going to push in on our liner just like that. Then we got to look inside this. This little bushing ends right here. So it screws on here. You can see down in there and it ends right here. So we need to add this distance to our liner before we cut it. So again, so we're going to push our liner in. Then we're going to hold this up to where it is. We can see that's where it would stop. So we want to cut our liner right here. I'm going to go just a little long just in case. There. Now we said this one was junk so we're going to replace it with a new one. So this will not be in the cost of the new liner because this is just something that if this one hadn't have been so worn out I would have been able to use it. Snug that up. Here's a critical component of this guys. Whenever you're using aluminum wire, the aluminum wire will expand 
inside the end of your MIG gun. So if you're using 30 thousandths wire, you need to go up one size on your contact tip. That way it'll prevent burn back inside. So we're going to be using 30 thousandths wire, so we're going to be using 35 thousandths contact tips. Now the reason I'm using 30 thousandths wire is, like I said, that for a 110 machine, that's pretty much going to be right on the border of what this machine can put out for amperage to be able to light this aluminum wire. It's just, it's going to be tough, but it can be done. So just remember, you want to go one size bigger than your wire. Like I said, I'm using 30 thousandths in this, so I'm going to put a 35 thousandths contact tip. And if you guys are doing this conversion on a Hobart, there's your part number right there. And these are the 35 thousandths. I just take everything and I keep them right inside the machine. Nut driver to switch polarities. Have a flux core nozzle. That's the number for this machine. But we're not using flux core, we're using solid wire aluminum. Solid wire requires DC electrode positive. If you're running flux core, or self-shielded, it uses DC electronegative, but like I said, we're using a gas with solid wire, so we gotta be DC electrode positive, so we gotta switch these connections around. Right now, it's wired for DC electrode negative. Swap these over. We are now DC electrode positive. Now look right on this door chart, guys. Right there, it even says you can run aluminum with it. Not a lot of people know that. Now, it lists 4043. That's not gonna happen with this machine. It is just way too soft. 4043 is way too soft to push through this uh, liner, even though it's Tefl Teflon or graphene or whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna be using 5356, and you can see right there, DC electrode positive. It's gonna require us to run 100% argon gas, 30 thousandths wire, which we're gonna be running. Now you can check this out. If we're using 16 gauge or 1.6 millimeters, scroll down here, it's gonna have a setting of 2 for the amperage, 100 for the wire feed. Now, that's why I say that this is going to be right on the edge of what it's capable of doing. So look, we got 2 right here. Look where 100 is. 100's maxed right out. You got to run hot and fast with aluminum. And same thing for this. So if you want to run 12 gauge, which is 2.7 millimeters, you're going to set it for 4 and 100. So according to that chart, this 120 volt machine will weld aluminum up to a little bit over a sixteenth of an inch thick. So you can see how it's got this double asterisk beside the wire size that we're going to be using. Again, we're going to be using aluminum 5356. We'll talk a little bit more about this here in a second. Then we go down to the double asterisk. Aluminum wire is soft, so feedability is not as good. Make sure that the hub tension is not too tight and keep the torch straight as possible. A push angle for the torch is recommended. So again, you always want a push angle on your torch. You want to go this way when you're welding. The reason for that is that the coverage gas comes out, it fans over your weld pool and ahead of your weld so that your material is actually being protected from the atmosphere as you go into it. If you do a drag, you're gonna get porosity. And this is what they talk about for the hub tension guys, and I have all kinds of videos on showing how to set the hub tension and how to set the drive roll tension. Typically, with aluminum, you use which is called a U-groove, shaped like a U. I don't have that. I don't even know if Hobart makes one for this machine. I'm sure they probably do, but we are gonna use Probably just the regular grooved for solid wire and see how that works. If we have feedability issues, we'll run this on the flux core groove and see how that works. Again, this is kind of an experiment on this machine. I have not welded aluminum with this machine before. But I will say, I think uh, Hobart, out of all the manufacturers, with this drive roll setup, how this is set, I think they've got this dialed in perfectly because um, I think this is the easiest way to change out drive rolls is how they have it set up. 
I didn't mention it earlier, but if you want to go back to welding hard wire or flex coil wire, you're going to have to take out your graphene liner and you're going to have to put your existing liner back in it. And the reason for that is that because this is just so slippery and aluminum is soft, it's made to slide down through this. The hard metal wire or the flex coil wire would just be way too abrasive. This liner would not last long at all if you ran metal through it. And ideally, you don't want to be running different compositions through your liner. This right here, you only want to run aluminum through. So when it comes time for us to feed this up, I'm actually going to take this drive roll off. I'm going to clean those grooves out really good because I don't want any contamination from the steel wire or from the flux coil wire that had previously been run on this. So cleanliness is really important when you're working with aluminum. So we're just going to talk briefly about wire guys. I've got some 5356 30 thousandths diameter and as we said earlier that this wire is much more firmer than a 4043 wire. The 4043 wire is a little more suitable to use on the end of a MIG gun or a spool gun because that way it's closer, there's less feeding issues. It's, this is just too soft to feed through a MIG gun liner. This will feed. Now we're going to talk real briefly about what you can't weld with this. One thing you can't weld with this is aluminum castings. And if it's going to be over 150 degrees Fahrenheit, this is not the wire to use. You're not going to want to use this. But this will pretty much cover everything that you're going to want to weld from extrusions to plate to all 5000 series, all 6000 series as I mentioned. It's just all around a great general purpose aluminum alloy. So now we'll get this spooled up in the machine. I've already taken off the big hub adapter and we're going to be putting on the small reel. Again, remember we want very little tension, just enough tension to keep this from flying off the reel. That's it. It's real important guys that you get your tensions right, especially with aluminum because it will cause all kinds of feeding problems and all kinds of issues that you might have. So I've got a video. I'll have you check it out. I'll put a link down below for you guys to see it. That way you know you're setting up your stuff correctly. Right now, this spring is just barely making contact with that reel. So that's pretty good right there. That's really loose, but enough to keep this reel so it doesn't just kind of like unwind on its own. Now take your wire, hang it onto it real good. Trim it and feed it in. Now get that down inside the liner. There it is. And I'm going to try just the regular standard groove for solid wire and see how that works. So we don't have any feeding issues. We're going to remove the nozzle and we're going to take out our contact tip. Now we're going to turn on our machine and feed this out. And you want this whip fairly straight so that the wire comes out smoothly. I'm going to turn my wire feed speed down fairly slow so that the wire doesn't bird's nest inside the cabinet. Screw in our contact tip again. Snug it up. Get our gas hooked up. And this has to be pure argon, guys. If you're doing aluminum, you want argon. So we are set up, guys. I got my argon set for about 30 CFH of gas. We're set up for DC electrode positive inside the cabinet. Our drive roll tensions are set, and our hub reel tensions are set. Go watch those videos if you want to know how to do it. We're using 30 thousandths wire. We're using a 35 thousandths contact tip. And I got some practice coupons. And for this, guys, we're going to be using 1 16th of an inch. And I get these at Weld Metals Online. And I'll have a link down in the video description because these things are super handy for setting up a machine. Even if you're experienced, these are great to have just to have a known material kicking around that you can use, that you can just pad a bead on to make sure that your settings are right before you actually bring it onto your finished workpiece. Plus, you can set up all kinds of different joints with these. You could do a butt joint, you could do a lap joint, you could do a T joint. The possibilities are endless, and these just make really good practice pads, and that's what we're gonna be working on today. All right, here we go, guys. The machine said two and 100 for 16th of an inch material, so let's give it a go. That's a lot of travel speed. Now with MIG aluminum, you're going to want a contact tip to work distance of around 5 8 maybe a little more. And remember, we're doing a push angle. What I'll do is I'll tack up a T-joint real quick, and then I'll bring you in for some closer inspection of it. Pull the trigger a little bit, get some of this gas flowing, then I'll have to retrim my wire.
Now if you look at this guys, you'll see that these tacks are cold. The black soot, that's, that's normal with MIG. But they look a little cold, so there's one thing you can do to combat this, and that's to work to your advantage, especially on like a little small 120 volt machine like this. What we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna heat this up using some map gas. And by doing this, what it's doing is, is it's making the material hotter so that the machine has less work to do to heat it up. So that when you're starting bead, will look similar to your ending bead. If you don't heat up the material, especially on like a real small 120 volt machine like this, uh, your beginning will look cold and then your end can look hot of your weld. So by doing this, it's kind of hopefully going to get everything started off in the right direction and things are going to be heated up nicely so that the beginning weld looks nice. You don't got to go crazy, just a couple hundred degrees and you know, water boils at 212 Fahrenheit. So if you drop the drop of water on this, and it bubbled on the surface and it sizzled, then you're probably in the range. It's probably right around that temperature of boiling water, and that'll get us in the right direction. First time I ever made aluminum on this machine. You could probably hear like a couple skips, like it was skipping. There was something going on with the drive rolls in there. Maybe I don't have my tension set just right. Uh, the beginning, I was experimenting with my stick out and how much I was holding it off. Again, remember, this is a 120 volt machine, so this is like right at its limit. But uh, towards the end, my bead actually looks pretty good. So with more practice, I bet I could stack dimes with this. Let me uh, clean it up and show it to you guys. Okay, again, remember, we're doing a push angle. And this is where I started. And heard a little sputter in like right about in this area. And then I brought my stick out a little bit further right here. And things started really running well. And I think that that might have been some of the problem that I was having. So from here all the way down ran pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, like I said, this is the first bead you're seeing me strike and I'm doing it right on camera. I'm nothing special. If I can do it, you guys can do it. All this stuff is is just take seat time and it takes practice. Let's mess around a little bit more. We'll do the other side and uh, see how that works. Now, you really don't want to be manipulating your gun too much, guys. Oh, look, we got full penetration on that, too. So if you're wondering if that's enough, it's actually probably too hot. That's full penetration. It actually blew through the backside, and it blew through that plate on the back a little bit. So definitely got full penetration. This is as strong as you're going to get it right here. Even in the area where it was all uh, sputtering, it's got full penetration. See that? Our voltage isn't what limits us, it's our travel speed that limits us. This thing is flying. For you guys that have done, you know, flux core or solid wire, um, you know, and you do an eighth inch, you're probably, you know, around the 40, 50 range. Very seldom do you ever push the machine up to around 90, not for a small machine like this. So, yeah, that, that thing's flying wire out the end. So let's... Uh, try this. This is pretty fun, guys. And if you guys want to know about this uh, fixture table that I've got here, I built this uh, and I built it using a jig so that it would come out perfect. And I'll put links to that too as well if you guys want to check it out. Again, I made these clamps that are holding down that material. This is all just budget-friendly stuff that you guys can do uh, in your home fab shop and it doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. Much cheaper than going out and spending thousands of dollars on a custom built table, you know. But then again, time's money too, so. Uh, but I think the majority of us watching this channel enjoy these type hands-on projects, you know. I'm gonna heat this back up, guys, because it's dissipated all its heat, so I wanna put a little more heat in it. Again, you want five eighths of stick out and a push angle forward. Thank you. 
This right here looks good. That's lack of fusion there. You can see at the bottom. Top's tied in nice. That looks okay. This is cold right here, sitting on top. So uh, definitely 90 was not the setting to use. So let's go back to 100 and uh, let's cut this and we'll do a couple more joints. This is kind of fun though, guys. If you were to fix something like this, you're not a hack doing that, just so you know. This is a very acceptable repair, especially once you get this dialed in. I made this also, guys, if you're interested. I'll put a link to it. And check that out, guys. We know we got penetration because look where it's burned through on the back, there and there. Nice looking bead profile. That looks good. Let's go see if we can make something else with this. I think I mentioned this earlier, guys, but make sure you're using a brush that's for aluminum only, a stainless steel brush. That way you're not introducing contamination into the joint. And I always say if you care, go in one direction. If you don't, it's your project, do it however you want. Now I have a feeling this is gonna cause me some trouble, guys, because one, I'm going uphill, two, I need to turn down the voltage just a little bit, but I think one is going to be too low. It, this isn't a variable knob, it's a click. So it's got click, 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 click. So I kind of need this to be about almost two. Maybe if I turn this down to maybe about 95 on wire feed, and we'll see what that does. But I have a feeling that it might want to try to burn up this edge of this plate right here. I'll do a very light preheat. And again, this preheat is just because this welder is small and you want your start out bead looking similar in profile to the end of your bead. And this will help do that. Yeah, a little too hot guys burning the edge of that top plate it did what I suspected right here started burning let me see if we can fill that in I think we've already gone beyond the theory of will this work or will it not now it's just a matter of how much seat time uh, we're gonna invest into getting really good to make this look nice I don't think it's gonna take a lot I bet with probably I don't know 15 or 20 more minutes, I'd be laying down some really good beads on this. So There's just some different joints, guys, that we did. Experimenting, messing around, playing with it. But overall, guys, that's a win. And that's just using a basic, regular MIG welder, guys. And as I said earlier, though, this is good for part-time if you're just doing something here and there, just temporary. But if you want something that has a little bit more settings, you know, this is going to have inductance and burn back and run in and hot start and all kinds of other features because it's made to weld aluminum. As this one is basically made to weld steel, but it can occasionally weld aluminum. I just figured I'd share this because I think that's a common misconception that you cannot weld aluminum using your regular MIG welder, that you have to go out and buy something particular or new to be able to do it, and that's not the case. I'm trying to save you guys a little bit of money, give you guys a little bit of an education that you can do it. May not be perfect, but it can be done. And that's how you convert your machine over, guys, so that you can take your standard MIG welder and weld aluminum. Now, if you're gonna weld aluminum more often, you may wanna invest in a TIG welder or or you may want to invest in a machine that is specifically made to MIG weld aluminum because then you're going to get the additional features such as run in and burn back and hot start and you're going to get all the other features that come with a machine dedicated or specifically made to MIG weld aluminum but if you're only doing a little bit or a little bit here and there or just playing with it and experimenting this is a great way to get started for not a lot of money. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. New videos every Friday, so please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. See ya.